Hey, thanks for joining me back here at Laser Engraving 911. So GWIC sent me this unit for review a few months ago and I've been playing around with it and I've had some time with it. I've engraved some stuff. I've got some things that I think are cool about it and I've got some things that I didn't really care for about it and I'm gonna share them all with you here. So if that sounds like something you wanna get into, then buckle up, get your pen and paper out and let's get into it on Laser Engraving 911. One of the things on the GWIC Pro that's super helpful is the camera. The camera can be used for registering your engravings on tricky things, but one of the best things that I like to use it for is if I have some scrap material laying around and I just need to cut a shape out of whatever's left of that material, I can just throw it in the bed, close the lid, let the camera take a picture of the bed, and then draw my shape over here in Lightburn and just cut it out really quick and not have to fiddle around with measuring in space and taking measurements on what I have left of the material. So let's go over to the machine and I'll show you how I do that now. All right, so check this out. I just put my piece of wood in there. I've already got my cut settings for cutting this thickness of wood. I click update overlay. What that does is it gives me an updated picture of whatever I just put in the bed. And then I just go over to my rectangle and I just draw a shape of what I want to cut out of that piece of wood. I'm gonna turn on my fume extractor. That's kind of important. So I went ahead and turned that on. And then I just hit go. All right, so for this run through, we're gonna take some Romark plastic from Johnson Plastic Plus, and I'm actually gonna do a real job with the GWIC Pro. What I'm gonna do is a customer has asked me to cut out two name plates, and this is a two-ply acrylic. You can get it with adhesive backing if you want, or without adhesive backing, and that's a really cool feature that they offer there. This is a Romark product, so it's brushed silver finish on the top, and then once you engrave away the first layer, it's black underneath. And it's great for uh, making plaques. This is actually two plaques that are going on some picture frames where there's some jerseys in the picture frame. A frame shop has asked me to make these. Let's go ahead and throw some of this in and see how it does. All right, so let's see how she did. Excellent. Cut all the way through. That's to be expected. And because we have the air assist on, that's how it looks when it comes out. But don't worry, folks. I'm going to take care of that right now. I'm going to show you how nice this actually really turns out. See, one of the things that you need to know about two-ply acrylic or acrylic in general, uh, especially two-ply, is if you're engraving with the air assist on, which a lot of these desktop units require you to always have the air assist on, you're gonna get this kind of soot afterwards. And you're gonna be like, what the hell happened? But that's pretty normal if you have your air assist on. This doesn't happen if you don't have air assist on. 
But if you do, and the G wick needs the air assist on when you're engraving and cutting to keep uh, particulates away from the lens and the nozzle, <clears throat> it's an easy cleanup. My favorite cleanup for for this uh, Laser Max, which is by Romark, is technical grade methanol, and I'll leave a link in the description below. <clears throat> I just take a little bit of this, dab it on a little towel, and give it a little wipe off. Try to wipe in one direction. Like that you can even wipe off the edges in case there's any little. Look at all that that came off of there. We'll do the other one. So you didn't know this is going to be a video about acrylic. And that, my friends, is what the customer will get. And she'll be super stoked for her picture frames. Metallic, easy, one, two, three, cut on the G-Wick Pro. Not too shabby. All right, I think next on the list, we're gonna do some Brilliance laser inks. You know I'm a big fan of Brilliance laser inks. If you got a CO2 laser and you wanna put permanent, permanent, and you wanna, you wanna put permanent black etching on metals like stainless steel, copper, aluminum, brass, this is the product you're gonna use. Let's go ahead and uh, put the G-Wick to the test and see if she can handle some uh, Brilliance laser ink on stainless steel. I'll let that dry, give it a few minutes and then we'll throw it in there, see what we can do. Brilliance laser ink on stainless steel in the G-Wick Pro, pass. Could have centered that a little bit better, but hey, we just wanted to get a proof of concept. It came out real nice and it is super permanent. Love Brilliance laser inks. All right, so now we're getting to the part that you've all been waiting for. What do I think overall of this unit? And you're probably gonna ask me, do I think this is the right unit for you? Well, I'm not sure if I can answer that question, but what I can do is I will give you 10 pros and 10 cons about the GWIC Cloud Pro. In the end, you're gonna have to make your own decision on whether you think this unit is the right unit for you in your application. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I think we'll go over the pros first. So number one, it's able to engrave all different kinds of material. As you can see, we tested plenty of material and it had no problem engraving and cutting those materials. Even the rotary tool was able to engrave the 20 ounce and 32 ounce tumbler with a little bit of modification if you don't mind that sort of thing. Number two, it's compact. It's got everything built into it, which I think is pretty cool. It's got the chiller built into it. It's got the air assist built into it. It's all compact into one desktop unit and I think that's pretty cool. Number three, the build quality. Build quality is good. I actually looked inside of it, checked how all the wires were sutured. I uh, checked all the electronic connections, and as far as I can tell, the build quality inside is, is very good. Number four. So number four is that it has the camera built in. While I'm not a huge fan of cameras, this one actually worked really well, but it did have some bugs, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. Number five. It can work offline, unlike uh, other units like the Glowforge, and it's compatible with Lightburn and its own proprietary software that comes with it if you want to use that. Number six, it has a dedicated following on social media. So what I mean by that is that there's a lot of people that have this unit that like it. They have forums on Facebook and other different forums where they're supporting each other, and there's active users using this unit and sharing their projects, sharing their tips and tricks. And that's always something that I look for in any kind of unit, uh, any kind of decent unit out in the market uh, today. So always make sure you look for that uh, when you're looking into a new unit is, does it have support by the people that are actually using it? Are there groups and support channels where you can go and find the answers that you need? Number seven, has a responsive customer service and they genuinely seem to want to be able to help their customers uh, troubleshoot or get through any issues or answer any questions about using the unit that could come up. Number eight, it's small, it's compact. Uh, it doesn't take up much space. As you can see in this workbench behind me, uh, this is it. Like this is, this is, this is the whole unit right here. So uh, this is a, a four by eight workbench. I'm pretty stoked with the size and the compactness of it. 
Number nine, has a decent bed size, about 21 by 12 inches. And number 10, it comes with a pack of starter materials. They threw on some acrylic, some wood, some other materials that you can test. And uh, that's really nice that they threw that in uh, with the package. All right, so now let's get into the cons. So here's 10 of them that I found along my journey reviewing this unit. Number one, the unit automatically returns home after every job and then resets your focus to zero. I'm not sure why that is the case with this unit. I'm not sure if it's the controller board, but it is very time consuming and kind of an annoyance to have to reset your focus after every job. Because remember, this unit doesn't have a movable Z axis. The actual laser head moves up and down to adjust for focus. But what I did was once I find my focal distance for that material that I'm working, I grabbed that focal distance and then wrote it down. So that way, when it returned to home and set itself back to zero, uh, I was able to just use light burn to input that focal distance really quick to get right back to where I was so I could keep working. I hope they change this feature in the future. Number two, the placement of the USB ports on the back of the unit, I think could be improved on. They have the USB output that you hook up to your computer on one side of the back of the unit and the computer output on the other side of the back of the unit. I feel like it would be better served if they moved both of those USBs, the camera out and the main out of the USBs all in one location on the right side of the back of the unit so they can both get to the computer easily. Because when you spread them out like that, you know, you've got to use these really long cables to get them over to your computer. So I, I think that that could be improved on. Number three, the internal exhaust fighting the external exhaust. So what I mean by that is that this unit comes with an internal exhaust fan. It just kicks on whenever you start a job in case you don't have an external exhaust fan, which I'm pretty sure most people would. And it actually came with a really cool external exhaust fan. But when you hook them up together, the internal exhaust fan is also running. And then the external is pulling that one even faster. And I wonder if over time, the external exhaust fan is gonna tire out the internal one. It just seems like a, a, a redundancy that, that maybe doesn't need to be there, or maybe the ability to turn off the internal exhaust fan when you're using an external exhaust fan so it's not overclocking that internal one when you're using the big exhaust. Number four, I have to talk about the focus thing again. I've already talked about the con of having to focus every time, but I think what would be better served is Maybe somewhere in the future, they could put a button right on the machine that allows you to uh, raise up and down the Z axis on the laser head. So you could quickly manually focus to an object without having to use light burn or do math to figure out the thickness of your material or any of that. Just have an up down button for the uh, laser head. I think would be a really cool feature. So that's more of a request than a con, uh, but I thought I'd throw it in there anyway. Number five, while the machine is slightly faster than the other comparable units like the Glowforge and definitely faster than some of the diode lasers out there, I still feel like this machine could be faster. I don't really see it being used in a in a high volume, high production type setting. So uh, maybe if you're looking to get into something like that, where you're going to have to churn out a lot of parts in one day, uh, maybe this unit is not going to be the right unit for you just due to its it's uh, slower speed. Now, you know that I use epilogues here in my business, and it's not fair to compare into those because those are like Ferraris uh compared to this and i'm not comparing it to that i'm just saying that for higher production settings or if that is going to be what you're going to get into i probably would not recommend that this would be the best unit for you i'd recommend something that has a little bit more speed that still has the same footprint like maybe the ranger 3 from light object number six let's talk about the rotary attachment so it comes with two different rotary attachments uh, one is has the, the wheels set uh, a little bit apart for larger cups. And then the other rotary attachment that comes with it has the wheels set really close, I guess for like doing smaller things like pens or little flashlights or things like that. I'd like to see them just include a universal uh, rotary tool in the future that maybe has the ability to adjust those wheels closer or wider depending uh, on your needs. And also having to 
uh, raise the unit up, like you can see right here where I have it up on some 24 inch pieces of two by four, to be able to do 20 ounce and 32 ounce uh, stainless steel cups. You know, it's not a huge thing. It wasn't a big deal for me to cut these two pieces of wood and, and put it up higher so I could have clearance to do those. It would be cool if they included some risers with the unit and maybe they're already doing that on some of the new units so you don't have to, to do that. That's a little bit of a gripe on the rotary tool. Number seven, no red dot laser pointer. Hey. I like using the red dot laser pointer. All the lasers that I use have them. They're great for framing your workout. I think that that would be something easy for them to implement and just an added little feature to make your job easier. Number eight. So right out of the box, this unit did need some fine tuning and I was able to uh, actually use some of the resources over at the Laser Masters Academy. And I actually even put in a call to Kyle, who's super awesome to help me uh, fine-tune the uh, scanning offset adjustments on this unit. I felt like it wasn't engraving as crisp and clear uh, as it could right out of the box. So I did have to go in and adjust some settings using Lightburn to get it really tight. Be forewarned, that's probably something that you're going to have to do right out of the box. But over at Laser Master Academy and Kyle over there, they're great. Um, they have a great support forum over there and there's lots of resources to help you dial in those settings really quick but I was kind of bummed that it just didn't come dialed in right out the box. Number nine, the camera feature. I've talked about this already. It works really well and it was pretty easy to calibrate in light burn. However, there were some periods where when I wasn't using the unit or, or setting up the next job, where I went over to update the camera overlay and the camera just stopped communicating with the unit. Um, and I was like, oh, that's weird. And I would kind of refresh the camera, but nothing would refresh in Lightburn. And I actually let GWIC know that this was happening. And I've seen that this has happened to a couple other people too. So I don't know if it's a Lightburn thing or a GWIC uh, internal driver software thing, but it's something that uh, I ran into and I know other people have run into before. So it's something to definitely take notice of. It didn't happen all the time. And when the camera worked, it actually worked really well. So uh, just keep that in mind. Uh, the number 10 con is there is a little switch in the back of the uh, crumb tray when you slide the crumb tray in uh, that is supposed to indicate whether the tray is already pushed in and the unit won't work if that tray isn't pushed in. And they do have an override kind of little switch back there, but that's just something to keep an eye on. It gave me kind of a headache when I first got the unit. I didn't understand why the unit wasn't firing, wasn't running jobs, but I could control the unit. And it was actually that switch in the back that wasn't fully depressed. And I feel like the mechanism that bypasses it back there is kind of wobbly. And overall, I think that switch is kind of unnecessary back there. And I'm hoping that in future units, it gets removed because I think it's kind of unnecessary. Hey, so once again, thanks for watching Laser Engraving 911. I couldn't do this without you. You know, if you have any comments, please feel free to leave a comment below. What feature did you like best about it? If you did get one of these units, what do you think you'll be using it for in your laser engraving business? If I didn't cover something that you wanted to know about in the video, make sure you leave a comment below. And if you like this video and you got value from it, make sure you check out one of my other videos. I've got lots of great content on my channel and I'm sure that something there will float your boat. So until next time, I'll see you back here on Laser Engraving 911.